Is Angel Reese facing too much backlash this morning? Yes, she absolutely is. And let me just preface by saying this. This was the most successful women's tournament by the numbers. The mm. most watched Elite Eight games, the most watched Final, Final Four, which we're talking about millions of viewers. History was being made left, right, and center. We all know what Caitlin Clark did. She put up the most points, the most assists, most threes in a title game, which was so impressive. But we also have to talk about what Angel Reese did. 34 double-doubles, the most in NCAA women's side, in a season, that was ridiculous as well. But I think I start with that saying that this is good for the women's game. I mean, it takes some dogs to make that type of history, the history that I just articulated by the numbers. And you don't really get to be a dog and get to that platform where you get to bring a national title, the first one back to LSU, without having that type of mentality, that chip on your shoulder. And I feel like we have to let these young women be unapologetically themselves. We need to learn to embrace that side of the game because we don't discriminate when things like that happen on the other side, right? Both sides sides obviously did the whole I can't see you. We, you mentioned it, Molly. You know, we saw it with Haley Van Lith and Louisville. That's what Caitlin did. Now, on the other side, we're seeing Angel do it, which is part of her personality, part of the reason why she's really helped spearhead this change, this movement to athletes being unapologetically themselves. You heard what, you, what she said in the press release. This is, this is for girls that look like me, that hoop like me, that talk like me. There's, there's a whole subset of people that are really happy to be seen in these moments, and they're all female athletes because that's how women are like I think there's this idea that we have to be cookie cutter we have to be by the book we have to play the game a certain way for it to be appropriate as an athlete you're a competitor you can be fierce you can be feminine and you can go out there and finish and I think we saw that on both ends Iowa what a tremendous season LSU what a tremendous season Angel being herself Caitlin being herself and that overall is great for the game well first of all <clears throat> I don't disagree with anything that you're saying, Janae. I just think that you're being quite nice and lovely as you always are. So leave the the, the vitriol to me. I'll, I'll absorb it. I'll call it what it is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I love Caitlin Clark. She's yeah. been a guest on this show. I think she's spectacular. I'm the one that's been calling her the Steph Curry of women's basketball, and she has done nothing to, to, to push that back. I mean, this, this young lady is spectacular. She's been great for women's basketball overall, not just college basketball, but women's basketball. I think she has the potential, when all is said and done, to be arguably the greatest ever because when you have that kind of range and that kind of handle and you can pull up from the parking lot like Steph Curry for crying out loud, I think that's something that you can transition to the next level and it's going to be spectacular to see and I can't wait to see it. But here's the reality of the situation. She instigated this kind of stuff. Let's call it what it is. She was waving. She was doing the Cena. How about what she did to Raven Johnson? She didn't just go into the lane and not guard her against South Carolina in the national semifinal. She waved her off. She didn't mind being disrespectful. So why is it that we're hesitant to bring that up? See, here's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to dilute your point by any stretch in there because I get where you're coming from. And as a lady, you should take that position along with Molly about how we all need to grow up and accept the fact that these women are highly competitive, they're highly gifted and skilled, and we should give them the love and respect and deference they deserve. But I'm going a step further with this. We all know that there's a white-black issue here because the fact of the matter is when Caitlyn did it, people were celebrating it and they were talking about nothing but her greatness. But then the second a sister stepped up and threw it back in her face, now you got half the basketball world saying, well, you know what? That's not that's not the classiest thing to do. Yeah. That's not the way it that, the that, that, that you It was the exact same thing. It was the exact same thing. Now, you exact can make an thing. argument that if they're doing excessive celebration in her face mm -hmm. after the game is over, all right, then you can make that argument. But you had people complaining about it when she was doing it during the game. Wait a minute. LSU told you before the game. Yeah. Well, we didn't like how she was acting towards South Carolina. She ain't going to do that against us. Correct me if I'm wrong, Janae. This is exactly what they were saying. Going into the game, they let the basketball world know, y'all think that this is going to be some storybook ending for her. 
Y'all must have got it twisted. We coming, and we going to get at her. They told you before the game, then they got in the game, got all up in her in Iowa, was up by 17 at the half, and you're waving, you're doing the Cena, lying here, doing all of that other stuff, and you're bringing up what she did to the competition. Yeah. I'm so happy that Caitlin Clark handled it the way that she did because of the throws of competition. She's fessing up to, listen, I ain't paying attention to that. They were getting the better of me. I was focused on the moment and the fact that I was with my teammates. But that's all she could say yeah. because she kind of instigated this. And Shanae. the fact that ha that hasn't been brought up tells us a lot about our society as a whole. Yes, Shanae Ogumike is not taking it there. I'm taking it there. You know exactly what the hell you're doing as people when you want to bring up how Angel Reese acted, yeah. but you don't want to bring up how Caitlin Clark acted. Shanae, That's the inconsistency. Shanae, I That's the story. I want to ask you this, because obviously Stephen A's uh, highlighting the double standard that's taking place with the black-white dynamic, but also to your point about not putting women in a box and to Holly Rowe's point, do you think we'd be having this conversation and people would be all fired up if this happened in the men's tournament? Yeah, I don't think so because I think people understand that trash talk and being fierce and mm -hmm. doing what you want to do is more normalized in their game. And now people are just now understanding, you know, athletes feel like they can take control of their own brands. I mean, we're in the era of NIL where people are getting paid. And at some point they feel like they can be bigger than the programs themselves. Sometimes that works to the team's benefit. Like we just saw with LSU and Angel Reese and Flage and so many great storylines happening. And maybe it can work to a team's detriment. But Steve, Stephen is exactly right. We all know that we can't ignore that there are stigmas in sports. I played in three Final Fours. You know, and it's not even just when it comes to how we handle things that don't go our way. Oh, by the way, I love this whole thing, Sinead Day. That's super cute. How we handle things <laughs> that don't go our way, um, it really is. It's just like how do we approach how we see athletes and, as competitors? That's the conversation that needs to be had. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.